It is so good to see you all. It's good to see faces. I am excited. I don't think I've ever been this excited to preach and see people. It's been so hard, and I'm still looking at a camera. So, But it is good to be here. And I just want to do something right off the bat, and I know he's not going to like this, but I want David Bowling to come up here. This guy needs a huge, huge ovation. He has been nonstop for several weeks, making sure we have video, making sure we have audio. I don't know what all he's done. I just know he takes a bit of this and a bit of that and a little bit of this, puts it all together, and we've got online service. So, but this guy deserves a hand clap. Okay, next week, 11 a.m., parking lot service again. Right now, it looks like it's sunny and 60s. So, I can wear this vest again next week and not be hot. Because right now, I'm burning up. But 11 o'clock, next Sunday morning, if that changes, we'll keep you up to date through the week. But we're planning to do this again at 11 o'clock on Sunday. And then also, can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. The 16th and the 17th, we are planning to come back inside. That should be yay! <laughs> but here's what I need from everyone. I need participation for a few weeks because we're not going to be able to bring everybody in on Sunday morning. So uh, several people, a lot of people have already told me they don't care what service they come to as long as they get to come to one. But some of you, I've already put in Sunday mornings, I've, and some of you I've already put in Saturday nights. But I'm going to put a list out in a couple weeks, and you just need to see what one you're scheduled to come to. And that's the one that we need you to come to because we have to split the crowd for several weeks. I recommend when we come back in, everyone try to wear a face mask if you can. I know a lot of people, uh, they don't like doing that, but a lot of people would much rather you have a face mask on when you come in. I would rather look at some of you all with face masks on than your face. Ah. All right, but that's gonna happen on the 16th and the 17th. We're gonna come back in the building. Saturday evening, we'll start at 6.30, and then Sunday mornings, we'll do 10.45, and we will not have children's church until further notice. So everything's gonna be in the sanctuary, and then also, when you come to church that morning, the doors will not open until probably about 15 minutes before service starts, and then we'll start ushering people into the sanctuary and get them seated. But that's going to take place in the next couple of weeks. And then also, starting sometime this week, I'm going to start calling some of you or even asking on Facebook, but I want to have about three nights this week and the following week. I'd like to bring about 25 people in at a time and do it differently. I'd like to do a little Bible devotion with you, but then also I would like us to spend time in prayer in the sanctuary and pray that God, I mean, I'm telling you, a lot of people's discouraged with this. I think we're going to see one of the greatest revivals come because of this. So uh, I want to see some people in the sanctuary praying and getting us back into that place and, and just preparing for our return. So again, and then also I shared, I've talked to some of you on the phone, but it's good to see the Kennedys, the Keepers. Some of y'all here, a lot of these did not get to see us online every week because of they have Frontier. So, but uh, that's uh, another story, another day, and all that good stuff. But uh, here's what we're going to start doing. I'm going to specifically call some people here in the next couple of weeks, and I'm going to do some 55 and older, uh, and I'm going to try to have some Bible studies for those that have not been able to be online. Jim Holstein volunteered to come in and do a, be a part of that as well. So but we're going to start inviting some people in and doing some small group Bible studies, things like that, just to kind of get us back in the groove of coming. But I want everybody that will, I want you to get out your smartphone. If you have a smartphone, I need you to get it out. If you got a dumb phone, it won't work. Smartphone. I need you to go to your text messaging, text messaging app. And I need you to text to this number, 81010, and then go down to send a message and type at F-O-L-W-C 
And that will keep you all in the loop with things that is going on. Text to 81010, and then the text that you would send us is at F-O-L-W-C. Everybody got that? All right. So how many of y'all are ready to worship with this praise thing? Now listen, this is our sanctuary today. So we're going to stand, we're going to worship. I want people to walk by and feel the presence of God when they go by this place. I want them to stop down here and say, hey, what's going on? So that's what I want to happen. So I want us to worship. And how many of y'all are ready to do that? I want to read a scripture, and then I'm going to get out of the way, and I'm going to turn this praise team loose. But I'm going to read a, a, a portion of scripture that over the last couple of weeks we've heard a lot of. But I want to read Psalm 91. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I love this part. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Listen to me. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon us. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show my salvation. Can we stand and worship as this praise team comes? God, right now we thank you that we have this opportunity to be in your presence, God. God, right now we make this this outdoor. We make your creation, our sanctuary, your sanctuary right now. And we invite your presence to invade this place, to invade our circumstances. God, and we just speak your anointing over this service. God, you're going to save souls. You're going to deliver people. And we just thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Worship with this praise thing.
such a sweet thing to look back and just see you praise the Lord just now. I miss you all. <laughs> I miss words of wisdom and words of knowledge. And I want Brother Allred to come right now. And then this praise team's going to lead us in that course one more time. But this man right here, Brother Allred, as he comes, God has blessed him with wisdom and knowledge and a prophetic voice. And I want him just to share what God has laid on his heart today. And I want you to come and church in Charleston at the first of the year. It's going to be a very tumultuous year. Don't you think it's a tumultuous year? Uh, a lot going on. But it is a time of opportunity. Yes. And I trust that God will help me to say what i got to say today. Many people are trading, uh, uh, ministries are trading money for God's blessings and the treasures of heaven. And you understand what I'm saying? They're trading fame. For God's blessings and the treasures of heaven. God is looking on. The scripture said the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open to their cry. God is hearing and God is seeing. And God knows everything we do. When Jesus, the little babe, was brought into the temple, the man, old man, was waiting on the Lord. This is what he said. This child is set for the rising and the falling of many in Israel. And that the hearts of many people may be made known. We are living in the day when God is making known the hearts of people. He is showing what their motivation is and what they're seeking and what they're after. And he is calling us to lay down our ambitions to lay down our pride and to lay down everything that is about us and take up the cross and follow the Lord and do what He wants us to do out of a willing heart. Yes. And that's what's going on today. Too much religion. Too much of man. I see prophecies on a constant basis that are for one thing to uplift, uplift the prophesier. I don't see very many prophecies that I believe. And you know what the scripture says? Be careful for many false prophets have been forth into the world but if you're living close to the Lord, you have an unction from the Holy One. And you know all things. And you will not be deceived. Let me tell you when you get deceived. When you start falling after fleshly things. Fame, money. We find what we're looking for. 
If you're looking for the, uh, the power of the Lord, the miracles of the Lord to change people's hearts, what you going to find? If you're looking for numbers and money and fame and fortune, that's what you're going to find. But all that's going to pass away. So here's what I'm saying. You are living in the days just before the rapture of the church. Yes. It is not very far away. And uh, it is a wonderful time of opportunity. It's a time to love one another. I've got to say this. There are millions of people in the world. There is not one of those names that I have anything against or have any will, a, a bad will toward them. And my friend, that's the way you've got to keep your life. We need to concentrate on getting answered prayer. That's what's been missing. You know why we don't get answered prayer? Too much man involved. <coughs> Too much envy and strife and division. Too much jealousy. It's time to set our eyes on Jesus and say, Lord, I don't care where I'm at or what I'm doing. I want to please you. I don't have to be up front. I don't have to be seen. Only thing I need to do is know that I'm walking where you tell me to put my feet. And it's time for us to do the work of the Lord. Yes. And so I want to challenge you. Let me, let, I, I, I need to say something else. I said it's going to be a tumultuous year. It is still going to be very tumultuous all through this year. All the way. This coronavirus is just a part of it. And I want to tell you something. You can disagree with me. You can get mad at me and do whatever you want to. But I'm going to say it like this. You always quote the scripture... If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, then shall I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Let me ask you a question. How many times have we had a day of prayer? How many times have we cried out, God heal our land? Now let me... Let you ask another question. Could it be that God has heard our prayer and God is healing our land? And it seems like that church people are the last ones to find it out. When have you seen Pentecostal people in the White House praying and laying hands on the president. I don't care what party you're a member of. I'm not a member of any of them. I don't want nothing to do with any of them. And I don't want nothing to do with politics. But I want to tell you something, that God is doing something in your land and many people are asleep and do not know what's going on. And it's going to continue. When have you seen Hollywood people who are pedophiles arrested? Who even cared before? There's something going on in your land. Something happening. And it's all labeled by most people to conspiracy theories. 
there are some conspiracy theories. But you know what the wonderful thing is? Jesus said, I'll give you the spirit of wisdom. I'll give you the spirit of truth. He will lead you into all truth. Listen, we don't have to walk blindly. We can know what's going on. We can be aware of what God's doing and what man is doing. And I'm talking too long, so I'm going, I'm going to cut it short here, but I'm going to say this. There is the spirit of Antichrist raging in this world more than you've ever seen it in your life, and it is a complete battle against good and evil, and it is a battle against saving little babies and killing little babies. Quit being religious and open your eyes and forget politics and look and see what God is doing in your land and submit yourself and, and uh, sanctify yourself and be ready to do what God wants you to do. And thank you, Brother Mick. Come on, sing it out with us. Is God sing with me? so excited just to be seeing people and preaching to people. Oh wow, it's been a rough couple weeks. Katie and David and a few of them, they man me, but it's tough when you're sitting in an empty sanctuary and preaching, but it is so awesome to be here. Thank you, praise team. Thank you all for coming. It's great to look out and see you all, but I've been, the last several weeks online, we have been talking about the, sub, the subject and the topic of grace, and I want to go back into that topic, and I'm going to close that out this week, and next week I may say something nice about you mothers, but uh, we're going to, we've been talking about grace, and we've been talking about the fact that with grace, there are a lot of believers who have settled for mediocre lives because they have failed or they have lost the understanding of the subject of grace. You see, understanding the inner workings of grace, if we can truly understand the, the, the topic of grace, it will revolutionize 
a believer's life, and it will revolutionize our relationship with Jesus Christ. I be, grace is the greatest gift that God has ever given, and it's a gift that is only useful if we open it. And what I mean by that, you know, we're going to finish unwrapping this, this gift of grace today because I believe that grace is one of the most misunderstood topics in the church today. And we need to learn how to utilize the gift of grace on a daily basis and launch into a new growth as a believer. Because again, if we can truly grasp the topic of grace, it will change our lives. Because so many times we don't understand the full topic of grace and as believers we live beneath our benefits in Christ. You see, have you ever received a gift that you just don't use? Don't be saying it out loud because somebody here may have bought it for you. But you know that one that sits in the closet or sits in the back of your kitchen cabinet? I can remember years ago, uh, Talena and I, and I don't even know if we got I think we got it for maybe our wedding shower. Uh, but it was a waffle maker, and we never used that thing one time. It sat underneath, and we moved, I think we moved it like three or four times. And then finally we said we don't use it, so we threw it away. Instapot and air fryer, we received those from her mom and my mom as Christmas gifts. And guess what? We wear those bad boys out. Instapot and air fryer, we use those in our house just about every other day, and they come very handy. But here's what my point is. When God gave us the gift of his son to the world, he intended on us utilizing the gift. You see, it's kind of about like what Brother Allred was just saying when he was speaking. We got a lot of people who are trying to do this Christian thing on their own. We got ministers sitting behind pulpits trying to preach without the power of the Holy Spirit, without Jesus anywhere in the room with them. You see, Jesus is the gift that never expires. Think about that just for a moment. He never goes out of fashion. He's never outdated. He's never obsolete. He never wears out. In fact, James chapter 1 says, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. In exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. Paul said in Hebrews chapter 13, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. So that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you. And considering the results of their, con their conduct, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's never obsolete. He never wears out. He's never out of fashion. Jesus is constantly and consistently there. When everything else in your life is gone and wears out, Jesus is still a friend that is sticking closer than a brother today. Sometimes... We put God in the closet. I don't care what we do on a daily basis. God desires for us to rely on him. Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. And first and foremost, you have to accept the gift. You'll be saved when you believe. The Bible says, and you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's another thing that the church has absolutely made impossible. Salvation is not a hard thing. The Bible says that if we, if we believe and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we're saved. There is no process. One thing I know this evening. Your family member would be offended if you received a gift from them and you never opened it. They say, your gift 
Mick is over there in the recliner. Well, I don't really feel like opening it. We need to embrace the gift of Jesus Christ and realize not only just embrace the gift of Jesus Christ, but we have to come to a knowledge that that doesn't stop with eternal life. You see, a lot of times we think we just get saved and we got eternal life, but your gift has everything you need to live and thrive here on this earth. Accepting everything the Bible says about you is true. Now, I want you all to hear this because this is powerful. Back in 1862, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, and he freed all the slaves in the United States. And everybody shouts and says, that's awesome, but here's the problem. The slaves, every one of them, were all freed. But they were not necessarily all free. What I mean by that, not all the slave owners informed their slaves that they were free. And here's the part I want you to get. Many people were held in slavery because they did not know the truth. We've got Christians still walking around in slavery because we do not know the truth. That's good preaching right there. In fact, John chapter 8, I think it's verse 32, Jesus said, you will know the truth. You will know Jesus and the truth. Jesus will set you free. We got a lot of people that goes around and says, well, the truth will set you free. No, it won't if you don't know it. You've got to know the truth in order for the truth to set you free. And secondly, not only do you have to accept the gift, But you have to read the manual. Men, men, not women. This is an owner's manual. I know you don't know what it is because you never open it. This is an owner's manual. We get something new. I know how this works. I don't need that. I got two kids, and I learned a long time ago, get out the instructions, because when you're going to get to the very end and you're going to realize that little thing that you said I didn't need, you needed it about eight steps ago. (laughs) And here's what happens. Just the other day, me and Talena and Michael was putting up this basketball hoop over here, and I tried to do some of it on my own, and then I realized I'm missing some things. So I got in crisis, and I went back to the manual. That's how people treat this. It's not our daily bread. It's our when our crisis comes, I'll get it out. This is why the church is in the shape that it's in. This is why we can't decipher and understand and, and call out false teachers because we don't have the word of God in us and we just believe that because a preacher says the brown grass is green, we just agree with him because he's the preacher and say it's green. I don't care who's on TBN. I don't care who's on the church channel. I don't care who's preaching on live stream every week. You better check them and know that they're telling you the truth. Because the church is falling for lies and lies and lies. Oh boy. Y'all have missed that old boy, right? It's getting quiet on the church parking lot. Here's the problem with Christians. Most Christians don't even know the color of their Bible until they get bad news from the doctor. Most Christians don't even know the color of their Bible until they get a letter from the lawyer. 
Most Christians don't know the color of their Bible until they get a phone call from the funeral home. Or the banker. Or the spouse that sent them that letter and says, bye. Oh, boy. It's the truth, church. We have become spoiled Christians. Instead of reading it for ourselves, we want to turn on the TVs and show up on Sunday and have preachers tell us. And then what happens is coronavirus breaks out and we don't have no way to get to church every Sunday and we got people scared and starving to death because they've never learned to read it for themselves. Danny Napper, I don't have to go on secondhand source because I can go directly to God. He says in Hebrews that I have a high priest. And he said, that high priest, now I can go into his presence boldly. Think about that. God wants us to look at it in his word so that we can understand what all the gifts contain. There are people right now who are spreading fear in this world. They are spreading fear and God is and the church is biting. We're taking the bait and the church is scared to death. This is the greatest time in the world for the church. Why would we be scared right now? This is the time we shout it from the rooftops. God said, fear not, for I am with you. Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the truth. The true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. So that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world by lust. Now. For this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful, in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Everything we need comes through the knowledge of God. And you cannot have knowledge of God if you never know who He is or ever read about who He is. If we are getting into the Word, it will bear fruit in our life. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2, And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. Paul said in uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says in verse, ch uh, chapter 4, verse 19, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Everything you need to make you an overcomer in this life has been paid for and given to you already. Some of you need to listen to me right here. You are not going to convince God to heal you. 
You are not going to convince God to provide for you. You are not going to convince God to forgive you. You are not going to convince God to deliver you because he's already done it. God desires his children to walk in that word that I've used so much here in the last couple of weeks. Sozo. That's where we get the word salvation. And when we get sozo or salvation, we don't just get an eternity with Jesus. But here on this life, we get deliverance. We get healing. We get blessing. Jesus Christ paid for all those things with his death on the cross. What do I have to do? Take ownership. It's yours. Open the gift. You need to possess what God has already gifted you. If somebody gifts me, you don't have to tell me to open it. I grab it. I like envelopes. I ain't lying. I don't read the card. I like the gift. We need to possess what God has given. Talena reads the card. But we need to possess what God has given us and what God says about us. The children of Israel. God told the Israelites, he said, I've given you a promised land. It's yours. Go take it. They sent spies into the promised land. And because of their unbelief, because of ten, two guys came back and said, we can do this. Ten came back and said, man, we're like grasshoppers to giants. We can't do it. That's what's happening in our world right now. You all understand that? There's ten people spreading fear. And everybody's saying, oh, man, it's a giant. We're grasshoppers. They wandered in the desert for 40 years because of a false report of man. God said, it's yours, go take it. And for 40 years they wandered and God gave them the promised land when they owned his promise and they put their actions into their beliefs. See, we say we believe a lot of stuff as Christians, but our actions back nothing that we say we believe. Oh, boy. Listen to me. Please, please, please stop quoting this phrase because it sounds great, but it's false. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. That is the dumbest thing you could ever say. You are a saint of God that used to be a sinner that is now saved by grace. I'm not a sinner anymore. That's who I used to be. I am a child of God, a saint of God. You're not a sinner trying to become holy. You are righteous who Satan is trying to make unholy. You are not sick trying to get well. You are healthy and the devil is trying to make you sick. You are not poor and, and you're trying to get God's blessing. You are bl a blessing. You are already blessed. You are already prosperous. And the enemy is trying to steal from you and make you poor. I'm not depressed trying to find joy. I am joyful and the enemy is trying to make me depressed. I heard somebody say this one time and it's so true. It's easier to fight from a position of victory rather than trying to obtain a position of victory. Any person that's here that's ever been in the military will tell you it's easier to defend a position than it is to overtake one. You have to defend. It's already been overtook. God's already taken care of that. But now we have to defend what is rightfully ours. This the, sozo belongs to us. Salvation belongs to us. Deliverance belongs to me. Healing belongs to me. Blessing belongs to me because I am a child of God. And now I just have to defend it. 
I've got two kids. And what if I told my youngest on Christmas morning and I gave Riley a, a gift? And then I told her, I looked at her and I said, and I tell Isaiah, one of the other, my other child, go and take Riley's gift. What's going to happen at my house? Riley going to whoop him. Or daddy going to whoop him one. But there's going to be a fight at the parsonage. And that is exactly what the enemy does. He comes knocking at a believer's door and he says, I'm here to kill, steal, and to destroy. And I want to take your blessing. And most believers say, okay, here you go. We don't even try to defend. Oh, pastor, the devil's been on my back all week. I got some news for you. Take the saddle off. If he's on your back, you're letting him on your back. He has no authority over you. How do we live out this amazing grace? Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Now we can sit here all day and debate what the thorn was. Some say it's eye disease. Some say it's a demonic attack. I don't know what matters is that it was not from God. Understand that. He said it is a messenger of Satan. It was not of God. James says in 113, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted by evil and he himself does not tempt anyone. He says in verse chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. In the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so that we would be kind of first fruits among his creatures. Paul again in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 says, concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so the power of Christ may dwell in me. Now here is a lame Christian's perspective. And I hear Christians saying this all the time. Brother, God will help you endure and God will walk with you through this difficult hour. His grace will give you comfort and he'll walk through this trial with you, brother. You just have to live with it like Paul did. Wrong. You obviously do not know what grace is. Jesus did not die so that I could just get by. Jesus did not die so that I can just get by. Paul said, but thanks be to God who always leads us in the triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of Him in every place. 1 John 4 and 4, you are from God, little children, and you have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. We aren't just overcomers. We are more than conquerors. What is grace? Selena, if you'll come on back to the piano. What is grace? It's good news. It's not bad news. 
Brother Larry, bad news says you got to live with it. But grace is God's unearned, undeserved, and unmerited favor. It's God's love in action. You don't get what you deserve. You get what God wants you to have. It's not based on our performance. Sozo. Salvation is not just eternal life. Salvation is deliverance. It's healing. It's restoration. It's blessing in this life. John 10 and 10, I want to go back and revisit that, says, The enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. He said, but I, I have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. The choice is ours. That's why Jesus said, you might. You have a choice today. You can choose to keep the saddle on your back and let the enemy kill, steal, and destroy you. Or you can buck that old Satan off and say, not today, Satan. I'm choosing life and I'm choosing Jesus more abundantly. My grace is sufficient for you for power is perfected in weakness most gladly therefore I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me therefore I am well content with weaknesses with insults with distresses with persecutions with difficulties for Christ's sake for when I am weak then I am strong what is God saying to Paul he's saying I've already done it my power my strength my ability my healing if you are a child of God it lives inside of you sozo Even the best of us, when we get distracted and and we get attacked, we forget. But there's a Greek word for that sufficient in that scripture, and it's called archaeo. And it literally means raising a barrier for to ward off. So basically, he says, my grace is raising a barrier. It's raising a standard to protect you. It's kind of like a modern day bug zapper. What happens when they get in the light? They can't touch the light. Listen to me. Child of God, when sickness and poverty try to attach themselves to a believer you are like a bug zapper with Jesus they can't attach themselves to you Psalm 103 bless the Lord all my soul and forget none of his benefits who pardons all your iniquities who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles Paul's response I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me that is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses in insults in hardships in persecutions in difficulties for when I am weak then 
I am strong. Psalm 107. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His loving kindness and for His wonders to the sons of men. For He has satisfied the thirsty soul and the hungry soul. He has filled with what is good. I like this next part of that. No good thing does He withhold from those who walk uprightly. (laughs) My strength, my ability, my healing lives inside of me in the man of Jesus Christ. Uh, One more song and I'm done. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. For his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let Israel say, his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let the house of Aaron say, his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let those who fear the Lord say, his loving kindness is everlasting. From my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me, and he set me in a large place. The Lord is for me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I will look with satisfaction on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Some of y'all need to hear that again. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to sit and listen to CNN and MSNBC and Fox News. It is better to take refuge this evening in the Lord. Turn the news off. It will have you scared to death. lost my spot the Lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation the sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the tents of the righteous the right hand of the Lord does valiantly the right hand of the Lord is exalted the right hand of the Lord does valiantly I will not die but live and tell the works of the Lord the Lord has disciplined me severely but he has not given me over to death open to me the gates of righteousness I shall enter through them I shall give thanks to the Lord this is the gate of the Lord the righteous will enter through it I shall give thanks to you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone this is the Lord's doing it is marvelous in our eyes this is the day which the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it O Lord do save we beseech you O Lord we beseech you Do not, do sin prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festival sacrifices with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I give thanks to you. You are my God, I extol you. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. For his loving kindness is everlasting. Can we stand one more time? And can we give thanks to the Lord? For he is good. And his loving kindness is everlasting.
Brother Allred, would you come back up here, please? 